previously at the Bailey House. The second she said that, I got so filled with rage. Leave him alone. Back it off. Back off. Is there, is there, no one else came up here? No. I don't know, I'm gonna take the headphones off. Yeah, I'm done. There was the cold, there was the cold. Yeah. But I was trying to, like the, the cold was moving around, like it was like a big blob of cold, just. Whew. Mm -hmm. Well, that just went off. Whew. Which one did? You got the chills on, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> The black, whatever the black thing was. On the door? Yeah. See, so did it again. You try and get, you try and get, you try and get your body inside, try and hold you back. Only get in, brother. In 1913, Qasem Bigney built what would become the Bailey House for his mail-order bride. She left England for a new life in Canada. But on the way to British Columbia, she met another man and decided to stay with him. She never arrived in Merritt to see the lovely home Mr. Bigney built for her. Qasem never married after that. He and his business partner, Emsley Weatherby, became roommates. Mr. Bigney started several successful businesses like a soda pop factory and a feed and seed store. They became so successful that Cossum's nephew, Howard Cameron, came to help his uncle in 1916. As for Mr. Weatherby, he mined the silver lead ore in local mines and helped out with different ranches in Nicola Valley. In 1933, Cossum passed away in the lovely home he built. Mr. Weatherby developed a long-time illness around this time, and he passed away in the home in 1935. By now, Cossum's businesses had taken a turn for the worse during the Great Depression. Bigney's nephew, Howard, didn't have his uncle's business savvy. He failed to pay the property tax, and the city of Merritt seized the property. It sat vacant for three years until Melville Bailey bought it for his growing family. Melville, a native of Nova Scotia, opened a successful business nearby. He was a blacksmith and wheelwright. His son John, nicknamed Melville Jr., followed in his father's tradition and continued working as a welder and fabricator. In 1965, Melville and his wife, Pauline, moved to Kamloops. He died in 1969, and Pauline passed away in 1972. Melville Jr. inherited the house and he lived in the Bailey House until 1990, when he died peacefully at the home. Mr. Bigney, Mr. Weatherby, and the Bailey family are buried in Pine Ridge Cemetery in Merritt. Well, this room used to be where our computer was, so when I was originally a volunteer and I was a treasurer, I would come and work on the books in here, and I'd hear footsteps sound like somebody walking up and down the hallway upstairs. So I'd go upstairs, and once, the first time I went up there, and there you can't hear anything upstairs. It stops as soon as you go upstairs. But after that, I heard multiple times, really loud, like someone with either really thick high heels or cowboy boots walking up and down the hallway. Um, I think it's probably uh, a combination. There, um, I imagine Mr. Bigney and Weatherby, and um, then also um, people have told me that all these items, a lot of them that were donated to us are from people that have passed away. So maybe some remnant of their spirit is attached to some of these items that we have in here. In, in this room and the dining room and then upstairs, it seems like there's a lot of activity upstairs. And I don't know, some people say there's something scary in the basement, but I don't know. I've never been scared in the basement, so I can't speak to that. And um, the young, the person had been here when he was a young boy at a New Year's Eve party and the parents were all partying downstairs and they put the kids to bed upstairs and the kids heard um, someone walking up and down the hallway so they looked out the door and they said it was a man carrying a dog 
and they came downstairs to tell their parents, there's a man upstairs carrying a dog. And the parents said, oh, that's just Mr. Bigney, who was, who had been dead for like 25 years by then, right? So it was uh, interesting that even in the 1955 that people felt the house was haunted or... I always feel like it's like a friendly spirits here. There's not malignant spirits here. It was in this room. I was standing right here. Exactly right here. Mm hmm When I got choked. I was you leaning. got choked here? I was leaning on this door frame. Really? What else were you doing at the time? Just asking questions. Mm -hmm. Who's here with us, Mr. Bigney? Are you here? Mrs. Bailey, Mr. Bailey, who's the man upstairs? I guess I was asking a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And this is the same room I got called an idiot. Mm. And where I saw that thing, man, energy run at me. So it came from that way. From the end of the hallway, right into, into here. here. Like, oh. But stopped at the door. And then, like, the spirit box had said idiot. I feel like there's just somebody hacking around here. What? It's like overriding the other stuff. Well, that's good. We're gonna have triggers. We have the laser wire, which if something walks by it, it lights up. It will show the path. And then we have the EMF trip wire down there. So if anything comes close to us, we should check what that is. That sounds like the growling thing. Yeah, that was really weird. This way, this is causing too much trouble. So we might have just heard a growl up downstairs. As we hurried downstairs to find what was growling, we didn't find a phantom creature. We found evidence of a ghostly resident. So Sandra had her phone set up on the floor facing the flux too. As you can see on here, it goes off while we are upstairs. But the scariest part of this clip, and this is probably setting the, the tone for the next two nights, is we got a female EVP saying, sure. Sandrita, were you getting any kind of psychic feelings at this time? Yeah, so when we were upstairs and I was just going over what I felt last time, before I started talking, I said to you guys that I feel like something else is here that isn't what's usually here. I feel like there's just somebody happier up here. What? It's like overriding the other stuff. And we've never had a female come through here, as we, far as I remember. We've never had a female come through here. We've always had men. We've always had male spirits. But you're right, the energy's a little different. You feel a female. So I'm wondering who that is. We should try and figure that out tonight. Yeah, the only thing that is different down here right now is that I brought a doll from my own childhood um, that's sitting in the sewing room, so in the woman's sewing room which you can go see, I left the light sewing room, which you can go see, I left the light sewing room, which you can go see, I light on in there. So what we're doing now is recreating, as you can see with Sandra's foot, I want to demonstrate again, if anything walks towards us, we'll know. Okay, and the Paralight Plus? Is down at the end, I'm going to turn it on, and if anything comes close to me sitting there, mm -hmm. it'll trip off. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to try and duplicate the experiment. Sandra's going to have the spirit box going. We're going to do a normal spirit box session. 
and see if we can recreate. So Sandra and I already feel uneasy in here. The laser is detecting. Who's up here with us? Can you walk towards me? And I'm going to reset it. Okay. few seconds. Is there a recorder in here? Give it a few seconds. Is there a recorder in here? Give it a few seconds. One thing I've noticed tonight at the Bailey house is we're having a lot of gear malfunctions. Is that you making our gear malfunction? Are you making all these devices not work? Or maybe they are working. Okay, that was a good step right there. We had a step. On the tracer wire, because you know both ends are going crazy, but we had some movement. What? It's just... It just went off. Where? I'm not sure, like right here. Jeannie, were you the one downstairs that made our device turn red? Downstairs in the living room, Mike and Sandra begin an Estes Method session to see if they can identify Jeannie and a creepy male that's come over the spirit box. Sandra kept talking about a lady named Jeannie. Are you here? Oh my god. Oh, it's the same man's voice. Oh, it was hard to understand what that said. So whoever's talking to Sandra, she can hear you. Can you talk louder or more clearly? It's a man, so what is your name? Don't do this. Don't do what? We're going to be back tomorrow. He did. That's really creepy because I was just thinking of a question. I was thinking, who is the person that choked me? Ever since that happened, I keep needing to come back here. And she just said, he did. Who is he? <coughs> Who's he? He's Jake. He's new to this house. This is so crazy, it's literally like the same voice. Leave. You want us to leave? Well, Maybe. there's the same, like, strong man's voice, like, really loud and deep and the same. What was he they saying kept or talking. Doing? Whatever I said out loud. And then there was like this occasional like fainter voice saying like, leave. 
What do you think is happening here? Do you think you're being protected? I think so. You... Sounds really weird, but I think so. But I think you're... I don't know who this man is, but I don't know. I don't want anything to do with it. Did he seem... What was his energy like? Strong. Do you think this could be our guy? Probably. I just like felt black, like just dark when he talked. Okay, gang, so with this experiment that we're doing, we've got Merle, Merle in the background there, you see in the doorway. Uh, he's had some physical encounters with the spirits here. And what we're going to do is use the SLS Connect. As you can see here, you can see the stick figure on Merle already. See if anything reaches out to him or um, might attempt to touch him. I'm going to use the screen recording software on this, so I've started. But the one thing you should know about using the SLS Connect, and it's going to starting to record you now, Merle. Okay. Uh, that the, you don't see on the shows very much. It needs to be mounted on a tripod. It is a connect. Remember, it's a video game and stuff. So it needs to be three to six feet off the ground mounted because if you move it, like you see a lot of people, investigators walk around it in their hands, that causes it to use uh, error handling, and that means it f generates a lot of false positives. So you mount it. You leave it alone, you let it stabilize to do its thing, okay? And you got Avi? I do. Turn on the obelisk and let's get started. Check is requiring me to use the obelisk 5 up here. It's not as scary in the daytime, but yes. it's... Yank. That's you. I'm a yank. Who's up here with us? Surprise. Surprise. Gail. Mammoth. Mammoth. So we had Mammoth. surprise and we had Gail yesterday too. Yeah. Yes. Is there a Gail here? And I also have got information today that Reveal Psychic Unholy. Reveal Psychic Unholy. Wow, it's getting dramatic now. <laughs> that Kossam Bigme is buried at the Pioneer Cemetery here. However, he doesn't have a headstone. And there's no record of where his grave is there. We want to know who touched his... That was a good knock. That was up here. Mm-hmm. Do you know where that came from? Down the hall. Things out of place. I thought I heard walking downstairs. Like I was saying, this is the room that seems to have the most activity. God, Jake, I literally thought you were behind me. Tell me about it. I'm fucking creeped out. I'm like stunned right now. I thought you were following me. Oh. 
Um, you're having a personal experience. Use words. I'm trying. I thought you were coming back with me because I was yapping. And I could see you when I went like this. I could see you walking behind me or somebody walking behind me. And clearly, it was not you. We will be returning up here alone, one of us, later. Good. It said good. <laughs>
That's a bunch of people outside. Is anyone up there with Jake? Let him know. Awesome. Are you up there? Melville, Melville Jr. Don't. Don't talk about Melville. Mel, is that you up there? Do you still live here? You're fighting. I'm not fighting. I'm just trying to talk to you. Criticism. If you're up there, can you touch Jake on the shoulder or the knee to let him know you're there? I heard a woman's voice, but I didn't make it out. The woman that's speaking, are you trying to keep the peace and keep everyone happy? So there's nothing bad to happen? Yes. It was a woman's voice. You're trying to keep the peace. I appreciate that. Thank you. What are you keeping the peace Your for? remarks. Are you upset at the way I talk? No. Are you upset with us trying to talk to the man upstairs? Don't you hold? Is he up there right now? Oh wow, the frequency's just totally cut out. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna open the basement door. I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna open the basement door. I don't know what this means. Baby. Baby. That's his camera. Uh huh. So that's interesting. The door is closed. Hmm. How'd it go? Looks pretty wild. Okay. I can't see to shut this. I think that's power. Yeah. While setting up a live listening session in Mrs. Bailey's bedroom, also known as the sewing room, we heard something move and trigger the flux too. As we rushed out to see what was going on, no, there was nothing next to the flux too. And as for the live listening session in the sewing room, we didn't capture anything, not even the flicker on our Eddie Plus. So, Mrs. Bailey, if you're here and you want to come into the um, I guess sewing room. Mrs. Bailey, is this your bedroom? You're more than welcome to join us. It would be great to sit down and have a lovely talk with you.
Is there anyone down here with us? Who's down here with us? This is petrifying. Something's upstairs. On the stairs. Is it which way? It went green. Is that towards the door? It's away from the door. I can't get it to focus well with uh, infrared. Who's down here with us? Jake, this is the yeah. ultimate. That was a knock upstairs. Okay. It wasn't in the basement, it was outside the basement. I hear footsteps. I don't. Where? I don't know, but I heard them. I had the camera pointed right at it, at the, uh, it the green flux, green? it's the green. Did you go back up the stairs because you don't want to talk to us? Over our two nights at the Bailey house, we found evidence of new spirits spirits who wanted to talk to the living. We captured at least two female spirits and two child spirits. These have never been recorded before. And that's not everything. For the first time, we have physical evidence of the spirit that walks the upstairs hallway. And it's not only the hallway. Spirits seem to follow us around the different rooms, from the sewing room to the basement. And we can't wait to return to the Bailey house. <laughs>